Fly anywhere with the Anywhere Map. I'm here today with Bob Zyko, who recently wrote an article on thepilotreport.com about using the Anywhere Map. And today, he's actually going to show us an actual demonstration of how to use the hardware and software. So, if we go back to just the basic uh, VFR page, we can see how we have these uh, radar features we can turn on and off. The clouds turn on and off. The storm tracks are still showing up there. It will show uh, METARs. They don't look like they have not updated yet. Uh, normally they would just be a little uh, dot that changes color based on if it's VFR, marginal VFR, IFR, low IFR. And they'll actually shade the top half of the dot is for the ceiling, the bottom half is for visibility. So you can get a, kind of get a glance of where you're going and see okay. what the conditions are there. Now if we go to our IFR route, we'll show how we can load a flight plan in here. And we'll just take off with the radar back so we can see and turn off the, the terrain. Now I just wrote myself a little route here, a typical ATC route. And I'll go into this mode here which is called the uh, flight plan wizard. Okay. And you can enter, like, let's say we're going to fly from Philadelphia International to, Phil, uh, to Frederick. So we'll do KPHL as our start airport, our destination is Frederick, KFDK. Now the route. This has a little idiosyncrasy where if you want to enter a uh, GPS intersection, you have to proceed it with an X. It just tells it where to look in the database. Uh, if you don't enter it, it won't know what to do with it. So I put X, and let's say our first fix is SAVI, S A V. VY. And then from there we're clear to the Modena VOR, which is MXE. And then from there they tell us to take Victor 3 to Westminster, EMI. And then from there to Frederick. And then I click OK. And it should interpret that. And I just showed the Frederick Airport diagram. Let me take that off. Because it thinks the reason it showed that is because it thinks we're already at our destination. Okay. Because we are. When you land and you slow down to a certain speed, I think below like 20 knots, it will automatically show the airport diagram. Okay. And it's also why it's showing this artificial glide slope. We'll get into that later because it thinks we're, we've arrived. But anyway, if we look at our whole flight plan, this view will show us our whole flight plan. You can see this route that we are given uh, takes us right through some severe thunderstorms. So it's nice to be able to see your route in that view. And another nice feature is if you have a Garmin 430 or a 530 that you can't enter an airway in, this will actually convert that clearance that was given, Victor 3. These are the GPS fixes that make up Victor 3. Oh, very cool. So in my 430, I don't have to worry about looking at a chart and saying, okay, well, where does Victor 3 bend? What do I have to enter? Right. I can just go in here, I can punch these fixes into my 430, and then I'm on Victor 3. It's a, a very nice feature. And you can, of course, go in here and move things up and down. If they tell you go direct, you know, EMI uh, after you take off, you can just go in there and you can tell to, you know, go direct EMI. And it will change your flight plan and it'll go direct EMI. It's a little bit confused right now because we're at our destination when we haven't left yet. Right. But you can go in their flight plan and change things. Now, once you arrived, you can do several different things on the airport here. We can double click the airport and it's going to give us basic information, tells you which way the traffic patterns are. This line tells you how you're going to arrive. So if you're coming in VFR to an airport, you're wondering, well, how am I going to come in in relation to the runways? This line will tell you, okay, I'll be coming almost straight in for runway 23. And you kind of plan your arrival that way. Uh, it gives you the information from the AFD, uh, runway lengths and surfaces, radio frequencies, other remarks, uh, the FBO information, phone numbers, the fuel that's sold. Um, it will do a fuel price. I don't have the file in here, but you load a text file in here available from okay. their website. Tells you the fuel prices. Uh, tells you the restaurants and hotels that are nearby. Kind of handy if you're making an on-plan stop. And then on the weather page, this is an old METAR because the system hasn't been on very long, but it's telling you what the basic Frederick METAR is. Uh, it's telling its caution, it's an old METAR. These don't always update, just like you sometimes you see them online, they don't always update, but it gives you a basic idea. It tells you the nearest reporting TAF, in this case, is 28 miles away at Martinsburg Airport, and gives you the TAF. This will fill in, actually, up here. If anything in there is 
less than a VFR, these boxes will actually fill in with um, yellow or red or purple telling you if it's marginal VFR, IFR. Okay. And it kind of lets you see, okay, I'll be arriving in about two hours. What is the forecast condition? Just gives you a visual. Right now it's telling us that it's VFR, blue over blue, uh, VFR ceiling, VFR visibility. And we go to the next page. This is a couple interesting things in it. Uh, one of them is a virtual ILS, uh, which is not approved for any kind of instrument flight, but what it is handy for is if you're flying into an unknown airport you're not familiar with, it will give you a GPS-based glide slope. And you can tell it, I want a, a three-degree glide slope uh, five miles from the runway threshold, and you can tell that. And it will enable that and actually draw it here on your chart. And it will give you a, uh, a virtual glide slope view on your chart right there, you can see. Right, which uh, you mentioned earlier. Very handy for arriving into a new airport. Again, it's not approved for anything, but it's just a, a nice feature mm -hmm. to know if, if the VASI is out, for example. If we go back into the airport information page, these are, they call them vector procedures. These basically just take the instrument procedure and draw it on this, on this page. Okay. Again, this isn't approved for anything either. It's just kind of for situational awareness. These, down here, they call these pocket plates. So these are the actual instrument procedures for this airport. For I click, for example, the GPS runway 5. I click open in pocket plates. It launches a new program that's part of the, the software suite. It's called Anywhere Ma um, Pocket Plates from Anywhere Map. And here it's showing us the actual scanned uh, FAA approach plate. And it's showing our position on the approach plate. Right now, of course, since we're on the airport, we're going to be very close. Now, we can mm -hmm. bring up tools. In this view, it's fitting the whole thing on the screen. Okay. The bigger ones, you actually can fit the whole thing without shrinking it. Here, we can change between three views. Fit the whole thing, a fit to width. This is how I normally fly. Because I can just go up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, and up here, it's giving you an overlay of your GPS uh, altitude um, and your ground speed. Uh, which is handy just if you look down and make sure, okay, you know, am I too low? Mm -hmm. And, of course, your profile view and everything else. Or you can click it and show the whole thing. Now, here it's overlaying terrain. You can see very lightly overlaid terrain. Now, I also have it set where you can turn on the red above. So if you're descending into a mountainous airport, you can actually have it shading the red. So if you have to go mist, you can be aware that, oh, there's a mountain over there. I better pay attention to my heading on mm -hmm. the Mr. Post procedure because it'll actually shade the plate. I have that turned off just like earlier because everything was red and it's hard to see everything. And down here, you can overlay. You can turn that terrain off. You just want to see the basic white plate.